Well, very honoured today to be here with Stephen Owen, who is the owner of our financial wellness report. It's something we've been looking at since 2014, and it's really interesting times to be exploring this very, very, very important topic. So Stephen, I'd really appreciate if you could give us a bit of background to this report and how you go about getting the research. Yeah, sure. So we've conducted research into financial wellness every two years since 2014. And it looks at the levels of financial stress that exist amongst Australian employees and the subsequent impact that that has on lost productivity for Australian businesses. Uh, the reason we do the research is because it helps us understand the triggers and the drivers of financial stress so that we can then design services, products and solutions to help improve our customers' wellbeing uh, and, and alleviate that financial stress. Um, now, what we found at a headline level this year was that 22% of working Australians are currently suffering from financial stress, mm. and, and that's up from 14% in 2020. And it might be good just to say when we were in market testing this, because the environment has changed quite quickly over the last few months. Yeah, absolutely. So we're in market mid-June, so right just before interest rates were starting to, to peak, um, but there is a little bit of concern around the future financial impacts mm -hmm. as, as well. Um, so while we weren't, cons weren't concerned or surprised by the, the, the increase, uh, what was surprising was by the level of increase that we, that we actually saw in the results. And we've been doing this for a long time, as I mm. said, 2014. Are the results this year very different? You mentioned the prior year, yeah. but are they different to what we've seen over the last kind of seven, eight years? Yeah, very, very different, uh, both in terms of the, the quantum of increase in financial stress but also the drivers of, of financial stress. So if we look at the reasons why people uh, were indicating they were showing stress was uh, you know, one group were, were primarily around um, their current situation, you know, dissatisfaction with their, their, their current financial situation, either not having enough money at the end of the month or perhaps feeling guilty around not being where they think that they should be. Uh, and then the second group of people, we saw that there's this increase in concern about future financial impacts. So you know, you're looking at interest rates, you're mm. looking at increasing inflation, uh, volatile investment markets, etc. I mean, you don't have to go far to see negative press on this stuff. At, no, you don't. Uh, at, at the moment, but, but all of that information really feeds into the psychology of how people feel when it comes to money. And what are people wanting to help with in financial wellness? And you've talked about it, rising interest rates, inflation. It's a pretty scary environment. Yep. What do they actually want? What do they want help with? Yeah, look, I think there's a couple of things. The first thing that we saw that was a real positive that came out of, um, out of the research was, was goal setting. So we saw that out of the worry about future financial concerns was that people were starting to turn their minds to thinking about the future. Uh, and we actually saw in the 2020 research that people were seeing COVID as a real catalyst for change. You know, they were either forced to make changes to their financial situation or they saw COVID as a real wake-up call. Uh, mm. and, a, and a reason to start thinking more about, about goal setting. So, so it wasn't you know, completely bad news, but you know, goal setting is certainly one of those aspects. Um, but the other two ways in... That's kind of unusual, isn't it? Because we think of Australians as living for today, but that's not what the research is saying or telling us. Well, yeah, yes and no. Because you know, while goal setting has increased, it, it's, it's how we help people bridge that intent into action gap. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so people have all the, the good intentions in the world, but you know, I think the opportunity... I think we sometimes have those as yeah, well. A absolutely. So I think the opportunity for AMP is how we help people turn that positive intent into, into action. Um, so, you know, helping people with budgeting, helping people with debt management, uh, you know, all those sort of financial matters that, 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 that they care about. And I think at least having the information that people are feeling stressed, mm. but they want help, yeah. can really help us, I think, as we start to look at solutions, products. Absolutely. And uh, think about the, the next generation of customers for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Anything else you'd like to say that you saw in this research? Oh, look, I, I think that um, you know, what was interesting was how different uh, life stages or different demographics of people were feeling about uh, how to best protect themselves from financial stress. Um, you know, it did depend on their life stage. Um, you know, we all have different time frames to retirement. You know, we all have different financial goals. Um, and what we saw was that younger people were typically looking just to simplify their finances, you know, looking to... Uh, review their spending, uh, or do things like setting up automated payments. Um, we saw younger families primarily just wanting to pay down their mortgage. Mm. Uh, and then re pre-retirees, you know, were looking to review their spending or review utility costs, etc. 
Um, but Were there any surprises in there? Because when you say that, you go, oh, yeah. that kind of all makes sense. Yeah. And you think you went, wow, that, that really shocked me. Well, maybe less, less shocking, but, but more uh, getting back to basics, which was the, the universal thing across all of those cohorts was um, setting a budget, knowing where your money's coming and going, uh, and actually having an emergency savings fund was seen as the universal way of being able to insulate yourself from, from any financial you know, climate impacts. And I think um, that is always very good advice, right? Yeah. Spend less than you earn, yeah. save for a rainy day, because we right. all have those things we're not expecting. Absolutely. So some good advice there. Yeah, absolutely. So what are we going to do with this research? Yeah, look, I, I think you know, one of the, the first things is looking at how we can actually help people get help. Um, and if we looked at the sources of information that people uh, sought for financial help, uh, Google was still typically the front door to, to everything, uh, along with family and friends. Um, but we also saw institutions like super providers, uh, services like the ATO, um, as well as professional financial advisors and accountants also being seen as, as sources of information. But interestingly, uh, people that sought financial advice actually value that advice much more significantly than other sources of information. Um, and when we look at those people that did get advice versus those that, that didn't seek financial advice, the reasons behind it are actually mirror images of each other. And, and what I mean by that is those that didn't seek financial advice saw it as too expensive or they preferred to manage their own affairs. Uh, whereas those that did seek financial advice actually said that it saved the money or made the money, mm. uh, or that they didn't have the confidence in, in, in managing their own financial affairs. So yeah, actually qu qu quite, quite interesting. Um, and that's a challenge for us, right? I mean, and that's not unusual research. Mm. People who actually use advisors really value it, but how do we make that more accessible? It's something we have to continue to focus on as an organisation. Uh, absolutely, and, and that's what the core of the research is about. It's not research for research's sake. Um, you know, we actually use the insights to help develop you know, meaningful financial help for our customers. Um, you know, we want to help them turn that intent into action. Um, you know, and as a wealth manager, you know, we're well positioned to do that. You know, we, we, we have a super and platforms business. We, we have investment capability. We have a bank. We have an advice business. So we can take these insights and really use them to develop products, services and experiences that are going to help our customers become more financially well. And it'd be nice to be the trusted um, informer for these particular Abs things absolutely. as well, because I'm a great user of Google as well, but sometimes it's nice to go to an expert <laughs> in this right. field. That's a trusted source. Really great talking to you in what is an uncertain environment. So yeah. thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you.